Okay, here we have a check engine light on, so we'll go ahead and check and see what we have. I'm going to hit the scan on it. it. Tells me that it has one code. If the check engine light's on, that it should be able to pull the codes. This scanner just does pulls the generic codes, but if the check engine light on, it should be able to do it. So anyhow, we have the code. Um, let's see what it is. It's P0299. So that's a, a turbo low boost code. And I'm going to tell you what we look for because we want to monitor VGT and also a couple of the other inputs just to see if that's given as a false code. And you also want to go out and look and make sure that none of your charge air cooler hoses are split or even the charge air cooler or the intercooler is split, um, given us any issues. But those normally also accompany with a EGR code like a P0401. So anyway, I'm going to go back here because this is also important. We'll go back to scan. We have the code and we want to look at freeze frame data. Try to tell when it was when the code was set so that way we can uh, maybe learn a little bit more about it and it's important if you're trying to do a repair if you know when it was set when you, on your second road test after the repair was done you can duplicate it and see if you fixed the problem so now we go through freeze frame data see what it's stored we have light load 42 percent water temperature 128 so the vehicle wasn't fully warmed up it was cold when it did it map RPM we can see it was set at 1300 roughly almost 1400 RPMs and 46 miles per hour intake air temperature that's the under hood so it wasn't really hot See if it caught anything else here of any use. Okay, pretty much we know that it was a cold engine at the lower RPMs with light throttles when that turbo was sticking when it set the code. That helps us out too because sometimes at least we can start ruling out stuff like fuel filters and different things because that would be a high demand. But it just gives us clues. It helps out to just to know all everything that we can when we're going after a problem. First of all, this is a 06 truck that has only 38,000 miles. These trucks do not like to be uh, sit. If they sit a long time, the turbos will rust up. If you start them and run them, you should run them long enough that they get all the way up to operating temperature and all the condensation gets burned out. If you just move it a little bit, like move it around the yard, the um, or if you're... Uh, you know, just start up and go to the store down the street two or three miles. It's common that we see these turbos stick. The updated turbos are better, but yet they can stick too. So a few things I'm going to do here. One, I, I'm out here in the desert southwest, and it's uh, l actually a little bit below sea level. So we want to check and verify our sensors. Again, because anything to cause low boost. An ICP sensor, I've had those things read a couple hundred PSI cause all kinds of issues and I've even had one cause a 299 so right now with a key on and I look at it I'm looking at my ICP that's reading zero so at least at this moment is not bad and the EBP sensor and my map sensor EBP is exhaust back pressure and the map sensor you want to see them well hopefully they, they mirror each other but within a half a volt we're fine or um, as far as this, I am looking at the voltage so I've got my exhaust back pressure reading 14.7 and I have my MAP reading 14.4. MAP stands for Manifold Absolute Pressure. The um, So anyhow, that's actually pressure. I'm sorry, I'm not looking at voltage, I'm looking at pressure. So we, we that's exactly what I would expect right now. And remember, VGT for Variable Geometry Turbo, we never want to see them at 15 or 85%. If it hits 15 or 85 percent, it's compensating for something. It can't get the desired boost, or the boost is too high. So right now, this verifies my ICP sensors correctly, is reading correctly, and my EVP and my manifold absolute or my boost pressure sensors reading correctly. So now I'm suspecting a sticking turbo. Again, we never want to see it 15 or 85 percent. With the only exception on that, is the if it has aftermarket exhaust 
and it's trying to create back pressure, you can see them read VGT get to 85% at an idle because there's no back pressure. And that's what it's trying to achieve. That's what the computer's trying to do. So ignore VGT at 85 if you have a programmer or aftermarket exhaust or something going on with that. So now I'm going to start this one up. I'm going to drive it down the highway while monitoring VGT. And again, never 15 or 85%. So I'm going to go ahead and start it up and let's see what we get. I'm going to start driving and film again. Okay, now on these, normally the VGT sticks on light throttle or hard excel. So I'm going to try to first a hard excel. And remember, we never want to see 15 or 85%. Okay, there we are at the 15. I'm going to let off. See the ICP, it's still stuck. Pump the throttle a few times. There we go. It's moving again, but it's I'm wanting to stick the other way. So here we have a verified sticking VGT. I also want to say I've never had the VGT compensate or overcompensate and show 15 or 85 percent with the bad fuel filters or anything else. Normally everything works good but the fuel pressure is down. When I see the 15 to 85 percent it's either a bad EBP, exhaust back pressure sensor, injection pressure sensor, or a sticking turbo with the exception of of course a leak in the system. So you want to, right now I'm using my ears to verify that there is no leak in the system. You can hear those normally, you hear the hissing. So um, always, of course, make sure that you don't have a leak in the system, but that's verified. I looked at that and have it. So this one, I'm going to pull the turbo apart and see what we find. Okay, we've taken the turbo off here, have it open, inspected the wires, made sure there's no problems with the wires to the VGT. The actuator. Open the, the turbo up. Inspected the unison ring. See signs where it's been seizing and sticking, so I'm going to go ahead and clean it up. And I'll also replace the unison ring due to a little bit of wear right there, causing it to bind. So I'll clean this one up, replace the unison ring, put it back together, and then road test it and see what we get. Okay, I have the turbo all done and put back on. Now remember, never 15 or 85% on the VGT, except for maybe 85% at an idle if you have aftermarket exhaust. Also, we want to look at the ICP pressure and EBP pressure, key on, engine off, just to because they use them as input, inputs, and we want to confirm that they're at least... Uh, from the reference point of key on engine off that they're accurate. So 14.7 is good for our area and also the ICP reading zero is good. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, start it up, drive it and see where the turbo sticking now. Hard Excel. That off there. We are at a light cruise. Just let off all the way in the throttle. There's a hard Excel. Seems to be pretty good. 